a lot of times people are like, well, how do I change my workout? Do I change the exercises? And it's so easy. You could do the same exact thing that you're doing now. Just change the tempo, slow down or pause or speed up and then stay consistent within that new tempo for yeah. three to six weeks and then watch what happens. Well Hey, what's up, everybody? Here's the giveaway for today's episode. Huge giveaway. The Super Bundle. You ready? Maps Anabolic, Maps Performance, Maps Aesthetic, Maps Anywhere, Maps Prime. All those programs you can win for free. You just got to leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on your notifications. If we like your comment, we'll notify you, and you'll get free access to the Super Bundle. Also, if you like to just learn about some of the tips that we give, or you want short clips to really just get to the juice, uh, we have a new channel. It's Mind Pump Clips. Go check that out. One more thing. We're running a sale all month long. The Starter Bundle is 50% off, and Maps Split is 50% off. So the Starter Bundle is Maps Anabolic, uh, the new Intuitive Nutrition Guide, and Maps Prime. Maps Split is a bodybuilder-style, high-volume-based workout. Both 50% off. If you're interested, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code MAYSPECIAL for that 50% off discount. All right, here comes the rest of the show. One of the best ways to get your body to start progressing again is to change your workouts. But here is something that you can do that's really easy. Change the tempo. You don't need to change the exercises, the sets, or even the reps. Just slow down your reps, speed up your reps, pause your reps, use isometrics, change the tempo, and you change the workout. And your body often will start progressing again. This is a go-to for me right here. Like, yeah. I, and I've talked on the podcast before that, you know, when we used to talk about... Um, Nobody considers this. They, no. Well, not only that, but, you know, we, we know that uh, hypertrophy training, okay, right, the, or the protocol for tempo and rest period and rep range, right, like is is uh, one of the best ways to build muscle, right? So that mm -hmm. that quadrant, you would say, like uh, the rep range, the 422 tempo, that's like one of the best ways to build muscle. We know that. All the studies support that. And yet when I would go into a gym or taking client and I'm watching everybody lifting, I don't see anybody doing a four two two tempo. No, they just don't. Most people explain four two two. So someone might be like, what so does you're, that mean? you're so let's use bench press because I think it's one of the easiest ways. You you unrack the, the the bar right, and you take four seconds on the way down. You pause two seconds at the bottom, and then it's two seconds to get back up. That is a four two two. Very tempo. slow and controlled. Very slow yeah, and controlled. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. Mm. I bet most people bench like they unrack it, they let stabilize it, and then yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they might do that ten times for you know in the ten to twelve rep range, but they don't do the tempo. Mm -hmm. And so I would be like, man, nobody is even utilizing that inside here. And so just taking a client and saying, hey, we're gonna we're gonna train in this tempo consistently for a phase and see how your body responds and it would blow my clients Now, away. on the other end, let's say you are one of those rare individuals that always <clears throat> trains in that tempo. You know, when we when we include novelty in our workouts, we do something different. The body tends to get moving again. Mm -hmm. So you take someone with that tempo and you put them on explosive reps, mm -hmm. right? Like that happened to me. So I, I, I'm i typically pretty good with tempo, but I remember doing, uh, when I followed MAP Strong, it was the, was it the snatch grip high pull? Very explosive movement. Yep. And I had upper back development from that that I hadn't gotten from the other way that I was training. And it was just because it was different. And so a lot of times people are like, well, how do I change my workout? Do I change the exercises? And it's so easy. You could do the same exact thing that you're doing now. Just change the tempo, slow down or pause or speed up and then stay consistent within that new tempo for yeah. three to six weeks and then watch what happens. Well, that's my favorite part about it is is that it's just, it's a slight change that, that brings an entirely new novel stimulus. So if you're um, still trying to master a lot of these types of um, compound lifts that need a lot of practice and repetition, but now you just alter uh, the tempo to it, you're still working on sharpening technique, but now you're doing it in a completely um, different stimulus for the tempo, which, you know, provides you with that, that, that type of spark for your muscles to respond. Yeah. The, the irony of this is that, you know, that I was consistently preaching this to my clients, but then I was guilty of staying in that tempo oh, yeah. because I was trying to hammer it to everybody. And I think I was preaching it all the time. Like nobody does a four, two, two yeah, tempo. Yeah. So I trained that way all the time. And this was actually another one of those things. One of those great benefits that I got when Justin and I started hanging out and working out every now and then together was because he didn't train that way. He trained very much more like a like a powerlifter style, which was so foreign to me. 
-hmm. And I remember after a while of working same out, on my end, right? Right. Like, yeah, it was a good influence, right? Because we were so opposite on the or the way we train, especially when you talk about tempo. And so I adopted lifting like that for a while, and I actually saw huge gains. I saw ever, all of my lifts go up because I hadn't lifted that way. Uh, ever almost like I mean I can't remember the last time that I had done like a like a one 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 type of yeah. tempo on a lift and it was huge so to your point um, yeah wherever you've been staying at mm -hmm. you know just getting out of that for a while and 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 then being consistent with training outside of that tempo for an extended period it, of time it cha it changes the exercise <clears throat> like you do do a squat with your current tempo and then radically change your tempo it is it feels very different yeah. like just pausing at different parts yes. of the rep or squeezing you know for 3 or 4 seconds at the top of a rep or at the bottom or slowing down or speeding up it feels very different. And so it's it's just, I, I like it because it's an easy way to change your programming. Whereas changing exercises requires a little bit more know-how and programming. Rep ranges, somewhat easy, but people tend to get confused with rep ranges when you change different exercises. What, what about curls and press downs versus deadlifts versus, but tempo, it's like, just do this. You're, you're going fast with your reps. Go slow on all your reps. Don't change anything else. Uh, dude, reps. I'm a junkie for pause reps. Oh, I love them. Mainly yeah. because, yeah, I... I always want to see where my sticking points are. I always want to see where I'm either losing force or, um, you know, where it, I have to grind my way through it the most. And I want to like hyper focus on that. And it's like, you know, to be able to pause and like really just, you know, lean into that part of the rep and, and generate, mm. focus on generating more force is it always uh, produces an amazing uh, uh, byproduct. Yeah. Now, I, I do want to make the point that, um, and part of why I think I was always pushing the 422 tempo was I do think the, the natural tendency for the, you know, early lifter right is to kind of go more explosive yeah you're and right fast just fast because they, it allows them to get more weight up it's quick it's it's easier yep. you know because you're not it's less time under tension mm -hmm. um and so i actually would recommend most people to to play in that tempo for a while oh 80 percent of the people watching this right now 422 would be a radical change yeah, yeah. and 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 what I like about that is that's such a that's such a slow tempo that it allows you to really you, you, it forces you to reduce the weight mm -hmm. and really slow down and concentrate on the form. So I think it's I think it's the better tempo to start people in and get them really good at moving the weight. And then as you get better and better control, then you can start to express it like a one 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 and and get reap those benefits. But I would normally push most of my clients that are, you know, relatively new lifters in the four two two range until we really got our. I'm glad out. you said that. You know, it's funny. Is, uh, back in the, I, I believe it was during World War II, they had a ration on iron and steel, or it was difficult to get. And there were a few gyms right at that time, and a lot of these gyms couldn't have lots of weight. So, you know, these strength athletes or bodybuilder, early bodybuilders, they didn't have dumbbells heavier than 30 pounds and they didn't have big plates. And so what they did is they invented, some of them invented <clears throat> what is now referred to as super slow motion training. Mm -hmm. This is where, this is a very extreme, okay? But this is where you do like 30 seconds or 20 seconds negative, mm -hmm. 20 seconds positive, right? So it's like, you are moving really slow. And they came up with this as a solution because they would go to the gym they're like okay like i normally curl 60 pound dumbbells i got 25 pound dumbbells how do i make this you know feel intense and so they started experimenting with these super slow motion reps and um it's i wouldn't say this is a staple training method but if you if you try it for like a couple weeks it's very interesting it actually yeah. it will for me at least when i've done this i do see like a boost one of my one of my i had a, a fitness man i was only like 20 i know what you're talking about yeah i yeah. had a, i had a fitness manager who um who that's all the only way he trained he had great physique too he had a great he had a great physique and that was how he trained always always trained like like he picked a weight and you would watch him do he would do like 3 reps you know, two to three reps and it, but it would take him like a whole two minutes to get those three reps out how slow he went he, and he would take it to failure almost every time um it, i was i was blown away I, that was the first time i'd ever been introduced i mean you're you're getting close to the i would say the the some of the benefits that you get from isometrics wouldn't you make that case yeah there's yeah. a lot of tension right yeah so yeah. i would think that you're so much tension and you're going so slow that you're you're going to recruit more muscle fibers that way so you're mm -hmm. getting similar type of benefits not quite as much i think yeah. as the isometrics would 
Um, but pretty close. I mean, I feel like it's that right in between of totally different demand. Uh, yeah. You're placed on the muscles. It, it reminds me of, there was this challenge kind of going around that one of my trainer friends I saw doing, it was like a pull up where you had to do 30 seconds to get up. So you'd have to like incrementally, like just like super slow. 30 seconds is forever for a right? pull up. My for God. A pull up to get all yeah, most people couldn't even hang for 30 seconds. And then all, yeah. And even on the, um, you know, on the negative going down for 30 seconds and just holding it and, you know, it's grueling. Uh, but it's just amazing what you can do to really alter a simple exercise and make it like even more insanely hard. It's also fun. It's yeah. super fun, man. You've been working out for a while, like experiment with, you know what that reminds me of? There was this, there's this, like <clears throat> these videos on YouTube where um, there's people that will reveal or they'll they'll go to another country and there's like a scam that's going on and they'll go and then they'll ex they'll expose the scam and there's this one I don't know where this was but there was a bar and it was like a freestanding bar and the bar would roll so it was kind of rolling bar and then the uh, idea yeah. was could you hang from this bar for I don't remember what the time was a minute. And if you could, they'd give you a bunch of money. Oh, it was two minutes. It was really popular. Minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So and but, I remember trying to do it after I saw it. <laughs> okay. So this 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 was like in another country and it was like yeah. this. I don't know how they scammed or whatever. Anyway, this guy was a gymnast. And if you've ever seen a gymnast hang on a bar, they're like a monkey. Like it'll hang there forever. Oh yeah. He goes over there and he grabs the bar and he just hangs. And he's getting closer to the timeline. And you know that these dudes, I don't remember what country he was in, uh, but you can, you can see these guys are like, oh shit, we're gonna have to pay. It was him. like a UK thing, wasn't it? I don't know where he was yeah. or what the deal was. But what did, these guys were total dicks. They uh, he was getting close, and so then they started shaking the bar, and then they pulled him down, and they got all. But they videotaped it and said, "Hey, these scammers are just they, yeah. you know they, they do this because they don't ever lose, and when they are about to, they cheat." Yeah, yes. I, I forget. I remember there's a certain amount of time that the average person can hang on to, it, and it's un, it's like under a minute. So two, it's like it was like a two minute challenge. Hang on there. That's hard. It's hard. It's hard to hang on a bar for two minutes. It straight. is not easy. There's one dude I saw uh, who did it. I think it was six minutes, and he was, but he's like a gymnast. Yeah. And he looked yeah. chill. I trained a 13 year, one year, one time I trained a 13 year old, uh, female gymnast, this tiny petite girl, her parents were my clients. And I'd never, to this day, the strongest pound for pound person I'd ever trained in my entire life. This girl, I had her, she was doing leg raises on hanging leg raises. And it, it looked like she's like, like she could have ate a sandwich at the same time or read a book. <laughs> hey, like where's it at, Doug? You found the article. It's in That's the it. UK. It was, it UK. was in the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred pounds. Uh, somehow they cheated him out of a hundred pounds after he. Was it? He, was, it he the, was it a two minute challenge? I think that's what it was. Right. Let's think, see here. I think I totally remember seeing. This. That's it. Uh, yeah, that is the one. Yeah, a hundred seconds. A hundred seconds. So yeah. it's like not even two minutes. So uh, under two minutes. Yeah, almost though. Dude, that yeah. would make me fight someone. Like, if, like I'm about <laughs> to beat your challenge. You come cheat. Yeah. Like, oh, it's, yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> We're gonna, yeah, they tickled him. That's what oh, they did. Oh, come on, oh, dude. Because they knew it's he was going to beat it. So, oh man, what? I would, <laughs> I, I would be with my buddies and expect you guys to fight them <laughs> off. Yeah. Me. I'm going to win, dude. Oh, yeah, hey. he's like kicking them. Hey, hey him. speaking of fighting, dude, the Dave Chappelle thing. Wow. Bro. Oh my. Wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. Hold on. Did you see the guy's arm afterwards? Did you see his face? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Bro, first did of all, his arm. Did you see my story? Well, let's I talk about what happened for people that don't know first, right? Yeah. Does anybody not know even I mean, the way the news cycle works right now? Like, it's the yeah, hottest thing in the. It, I know. Yeah, but it's so, it's like an inevitable kind of follow up to the Will Smith uh, slap, right? It's like now all of a sudden somebody else got the cojones to get up there and try and tackle Dave Chappelle for well, some reason. I hope people take, now see the pictures of what happened to him afterwards and say, <laughs> "Man, probably not a so good idea." So my buddy was yeah. there, and he was yeah, he was at the show. Yeah, he was at the show. So he said it was crazy, you know. And because he said it, he wasn't like introducing like most deaf or something like that. He goes, it wasn't even like he said some joke. He didn't say something. And then that somebody rushed the stage. It was somebody who was planning to do that to him no matter what. Yeah. So I, I heard, so the guy runs up, tries to tackle Dave. Obviously security gets him. He had like a knife on him or something like that. So he had a, he had a, a gun or I mean a knife that looked like a gun. Have you seen it? Have you seen the pictures of no, it? it? I haven't like, yet. I've, I was still trying to wait to see if it was confirmed that he was like. On did he him. go at him with the knife, or was I don't just think on so. Him? I think he just was on him. Okay. So, but I think that's probably how they got away with the fucking ass beating that they gave him because wow. they took him. So my buddy says they they take him backstage and he can see because he's there live. And he says they drove him backstage and they kicked the shit out of him. And even Chappelle came running back, got kicks in, went back, <laughs> came, came, came in there, so got his lickings in, bro. So this dude definitely, uh, definitely paid paid the price. It's like a, for it's like a, like like Vegas casinos. Yeah. Like they, Is that they it? Catch yeah. See the knife. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. See the knife. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. That look, dude, bro. That's so scary. whatever wait, they okay. What okay wait, wait a second. That has to be the stupidest thing ever. Why would you? Okay. Uh, okay. 
If you have a, a, a if you have a gun, a have gun. a gun. Yeah, yeah. exactly. If you, all, if you have something that looks, okay, have you ever heard of this the saying to bring a knife to a gunfight? Yes. Yeah. And imagine that you have you pull that out and some other dude has a gun. Like I you're brought a, get shot. Uh, a gun knife to a, a, a gunfight. That yeah. has to be that has to be the stupidest invention ever. That's so dumb. Yeah. That, why would you want a weapon that is weaker than the the way the weapon looks? The, the, that'd be like <laughs> having a knife that's that then it, it's plastic or something. Like, like what? what are they? Unbelievable. Well, the way that his arm was broken because his elbow was all weird and kind of hanging, it looks like they got him in a a Kimura lock. This is a jujitsu lock where they take your arm up and they, and they then internally uh, rotate it and didn't it pay tore. attention to him. His tap. Yeah. 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 Kept going. Oh no! It, you if you crank on that, what you'll do is you'll tear their their shoulder and then you'll do what's called a spiral fracture on their humerus, which Oof. you do not want. No, if you, you get a, a spiral you fracture. break your arm and you it's a spiral fracture. It it almost never heals properly. I yep. have a buddy that it happened to, and one you arm was always slightly rotated. <laughs> yeah. I had a what if somebody had the to smarts too. to like to to put the knife on him just so they could beat the shit out of him for for rushing the stage like that? It's like you rush the stage like that because here I you what if you rush the stage like that and you don't have a weapon or anything? Like mm. what happens to the people that beat the shit out of him like that? Are they yeah, getting a lot of trouble? It could be excessive. Uh, right. It could be totally excessive. Breaking his shoulder like that and beat his face is beat in like crazy. Yeah, but if I he wonder, had a weapon. I wonder how much like leeway the, the bodyguards and security have. But let's be honest. Um, Dave Chappelle had an entourage. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Chris Rock should, should learn a few things. That's okay. So this is what I was talking about from when I Dave saw Chappelle. this. I'm like. You that's know, a normal reaction, by the way. If you rush the stage, that's what's supposed to happen. Security is supposed yeah, to take your dude. ass. Yeah. But you know, Will Smith does it, and everybody's like, it gives him a standing yeah. ovation award yeah. afterwards. No, 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 no. Let's give him an award. After, I know, I know the Chris Rock thing is 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 old news, but this make made me think about the whole Chris Rock. And I thought, you know what that that is the normal reaction if your your boy is Dave Chappelle and you're either security or his friends there, and you see that like so Chris Rock has obviously no security or no friends. Yeah, did he not where, have any? Where were they? I, yeah, like why? I mean, if if one of you guys were on stage doing your thing, I would be there to support it. Mm. Well, it was and in a different get, setting because, it, like, that's again, it, it looked performative on, on some level. It was confusing. Yeah, it was confusing. Yeah. I think more than like straightforward. Like, yeah, a lot of people. Just, that's Aah. a good point. I, right. I, I, if I was there, I would have thought, "Oh, this is part of the show," and then it would have taken me like a few that's minutes fair. to be that's like, "That's fair," because oh, you got an actor coming up. Oh, look at that! Exactly. See, that looks to me. Yeah, that's the picture I shared. <laughs> that looks to me like a spiral fracture, or and or that looks like a. I'm never. Gonna rush the stage again. Look, I don't think is. he needs the handcuffs at that point. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I think he's going I anywhere. He's trying to move his arm. Uh, yeah, you know, if, he's, if as they're pulling him by, he kind of slap his elbow. Hey, you ah. know what's great though? Like he went to like tackle him, and Dave Chappelle he st- like olayed him. Yeah, you know? <laughs> he didn't even like do anything. Yeah. He just, wow, it, it, it makes it reminds me of like you ever see read like stories or or watch movies, I guess, or documentaries about like how Vegas. How they the casinos oh, operate with cheaters? They don't fuck. Around. They'll catch them and they'll take them in the back and then they'll walk them out. And you're like, what happened to that guy? Yeah, he got the <laughs> shit beat out of him. You know, <laughs> that doesn't look good. I at told all. you guys my my Can't Vegas story like that where anymore. my my buddy got uh, sat with the, the bill right. So we uh, this was like in my early twenties. Uh, this actually from uh, uh, Larry. Uh, it was his bachelor party. We were all there for that, and there was like twenty guys there, and we were at. Um, what was the, what was the, do you remember the nightclub that was in the hard rock back then? I don't remember the name uh, of it right now. It was like the heart, heart something. I can't no remember idea. what it was. Anyways, it was with the nightclub in, at heart rock, uh, hard rock. And we have like 20, 20 dudes deep. So we had two big VIP tables uh, that we open, open the tabs up early in the night. And just, I mean, we, we went ham well, all night long. I think the bill was like 20 something thousand dollars. And, uh, you know, and everybody that was there, like the reason why no one tripped because everybody was good for it. Everybody had money. Everybody would enough people to split the bill. Yeah, every every guy that was there, everyone everyone did well for themselves. And like we, at the, that was like kind of the unset agreement would be like, yeah, when the bill comes, we'll. we'll mm-hmm. all, but everybody like ended up doing their thing. Like I remember, I left early with some girl, and then I, somebody else did the same thing. And like people just and it was, ended up my one buddy who stayed there till the club shut down at like four. <laughs> you in don't the want morning. to be that guy that yeah. gets left. Yeah, you know, and everyone's drunk, so no one's really thinking. You know, what I'm saying and here yeah. and it's. Four o'clock. I've been long in bed and asleep with this chick and some of that. So are my other friends. They've all dispersed and gone other places. And he's left by himself. And they're and like, <laughs> "Hey, bro, you can't go nowhere." Yeah. And so he yeah, calls the you. he calls the room. And I remember I remember being so like hungover and hearing the phone ring at four o'clock in the morning. It's ringing, 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 ringing. 
And finally, I like, get it. And uh, by the way, at this like, time, who the hell's calling me? Damn well, at it. this time too, I'm kind of the new guy in the group, like of the friends. Like this, I I have only hung out with them a couple times, so they're not really. I'm tight with Larry, but not really tight with all mm. the rest of the guys. So I keep hearing the phone ring like crazy, and finally, I get I get up to go answer, it, and there's dudes passed out on the floor and just ran. I yeah. mean, it's like looks like one of those. It's like things. the movie The Hangover. Yeah, it looks like that. It yeah. totally looks a like chicken, that. Chicken tiger. I, I answer the phone, <laughs> and it's our boy. It's my. It's our boy Shane, and he's like, "Hey, you got to come down here. the The tab's twenty thousand. I don't. My card doesn't have that limit. This and that. And I'm like, what? So I get wake up one of my other buddies, and we go down there, and they've got him in like behind the nightclub, like sitting on the curb on the curb. Two big dudes like sitting there, and he's got he's just sitting sitting on the curb waiting. For <laughs> you one ain't of us. going oh, anywhere, like, yeah, nice. dude. I thought, damn, well. if we didn't show up, I wonder, I wonder what the rest of this would have looked like, you know. Wow. So yeah, he was real relieved to see us roll up to come help with the bill wow. and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah bouncers yeah, have they have. Uh, a, more leeway well you know what it is because if like so what i imagine happens with like this Chappelle thing is you know there's 10 dudes kicking the shit out of him right but it's their story versus his story mm -hmm. so he's got you got 10 stories being like, oh yeah no he pulled a knife you know and what, he tried though? to stab us and you know what also yeah. i you know i i used to train with a lot of uh police officers and bouncers so like you do martial arts or boxing or whatever usually there's there's gonna be bouncers and cops in your in your class or whatever a lot of police officers would also sometimes bounce and or they were friends. So it's like cops show up and the bouncer's there and like, hey, what's up, John? Hey, what's going on? Oh, this guy, you know, he tried to get in and then, you know, he's got a broken face. And like, all right, we'll take him into the, you know, yeah. we'll take him into the to, to, to yeah. the to the office or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And nobody gets in trouble, yeah, you know, because yeah. it's kind of like they, they work together. Yeah. <clears throat> that is crazy. Well, speaking no. of uh, of champions, I gotta give my poor wife a shout out. This pregnancy she says that this little girl that's inside of her she's like she's gonna be the devil i swear <laughs> the nausea and everything has been so bad and i and so it's still going huh it's getting better so now what's happening is she'll have like long period feeling normal and then it just hits and it usually hits at night which is weird they call it morning sickness but for her it's the reverse <clears throat> but the other night we were sitting there and she was so upset and i'm like what's the matter honey and she's like i want i've been all see like i was feeling good today and I was thinking about all the stuff that you're doing. Cause right now I'm just, I'm doing everything. When, when she feels that way, she's literally on the couch, uh, throwing up half the time, sitting there, can't do much. So I'm handling everything. Right. So she's like, you know, you've been doing so much. And I've been thinking about how, when you come home tonight, cause I was feeling better. I want to show you how much I appreciate you. I want to hug you. I want to this and that. But when I got home, nausea kicked in and she felt terrible. So she was so upset. And I told her, I said, you know, honey, I said, however hard I'm, or all the stuff that I'm handling right now. Yeah, it's hard and it's a lot of stuff. I said, but you literally have been, I know how I am when I'm sick. You guys know that too. And you guys are the same. You are, you're, you and you and I are very similar like this. <laughs> yeah. When I'm sick, I am the worst person. I'm very upset. I don't like life. I'm quite depressed. <laughs> Three days of sickness. And I'm like, get me out of here. Yeah. Uh, this has been like nine weeks that of constant, like just terrible crap. Can't do anything. Feel like garbage. So I feel I feel bad, and you know, there's women that have that for nine the whole pregnancy. Yeah, the whole no, pregnancy. It happens, it's brutal. What a nightmare! I only yeah. think they can take it. I take it. I don't think men can do that. I don't think we could handle that. There's no way. Yeah, Bro. I get really angry. Yeah. yeah, like my whole thing is if I get sick, I don't like. I, I'm like I'm not sick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I just do extra stuff, yeah. you know, and I make myself feel like more shit. You know? yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm this not is not sick. effective, right? No. Like, can you imagine doing that for nine months? <laughs> oh, no, what? I think my head was I'm close. weird. I'm like the uh, opposite, total extreme opposite of my personality. Like, I'm so the person who's like, you know, don't help me. I got, I don't ask for help. I don't want help. Like, I do everything. Yeah, I'm, resilient. I'm super right? independent. Yeah. Like, also, I get sick and I'm like the complete opposite. Oh, yeah. dude. Just a baby. I can't even get up to get myself <laughs> a glass of water. Like, I'm just, like, <laughs> just <laughs> odd. Do you I'm have just, a little bell? Just, <laughs> yeah, dude. Hey, are, you know, you that, uh, are you that guy? <laughs> are you that guy where you're like, uh, you're going to get dehydrated? I have to bring you out of water anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm you. a pain. I'm a pain. For <laughs> sure, well, so. you know, I, I'm a caretaker, right? So if someone's sick around me, if somebody doesn't feel good, I mean, you know this too, Adam. You had yeah. a, a busted foot with me when we went on a, a trip together. And I was, yeah, you're kind of like our, our house mom here. I, yeah. I it's it's in my nature, right? I, my yeah, I love that about you, though. My nature is to do that, that, and so you know, I'll, I'll do that. But then when I'm on the other end of it, I'm the worst because uh, you ask me like, "What do you need? Nothing. Yeah. What can I get you? Nothing. How do you feel? Fine. <clears throat> but I'm obviously not fine because I'm in a terrible mood and I'll feel good. Yeah. So I'm, I'm like I said, I'm watching her and I'm like, "You are it." And then I tell her, I said, "You know what? You're such a warrior." You're such a champion. She's like, it's not like I have a choice. I said, well, it doesn't matter. I said, if I was in the ocean 
treading water for five days. You'd think I was a champion too, even though I had no choice. I was going to drown or swim. Yeah. Said you're you're handling this, so you, you give it's a it's a lot of uh, I have a lot of respect for for moms, moms that can do yeah, that because no, that 100%. is it's just a, a marathon of just oh, ugh, yeah. Yeah, terrible. Just and I'm it. waiting because we're getting in the second trimester, and this is supposed to be the the fun the, the I guess of the three trimesters the better you know horny one that's the that's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I was marking it off on my calendar. Yeah. I'm like, all right, Naja. I'm like, Naja, no, no, go away. We got, we got two, two to three months of like, I can just see stuff. I need a break. I'll, I'll hold the bowl for you. I'll hold the bowl for yeah. you. <laughs> what are you doing? You can watch your favorite show. It's, yeah. you know. No, that's not. Yeah, it's fine. That's true. Oh, yeah, I don't know why true. this reminded me of this, but there's, I she just, just did. Have you got, are you guys aware of hole in one insurance? Of what? Yeah, yeah. Well, I know why you thought of that. <laughs> Just hole in one okay. insurance. So I read this no. article. Is this other, for golf? Yes. Okay. So I was so fascinated with this. I, I had I'm to share confused. it with you guys. Um, I I know none of us are really big golfers, but um, I have golfed enough to been uh, at a golf course before and seen like um, you know you get to a random hole at like a nice place, and then it's like you use a hole four, and it says you get a hole in one here, and you can win a, a you know seventy thousand dollar Mercedes, and they do this in all the big tournaments, so amateur and pros. They always have this. Uh -huh. You see, I mean, I don't, I mean, there's tens of thousands of these at, happening all the time. Oh, yeah, because it's like big news if somebody actually gets one. Yeah, yeah, and it, wow, and it awesome. happens. It, ha it does happen, right? They, they, they win. So um, I, I just assumed that when that happens, that the, you know, golf course or, or the whoever puts the tournament on has to, to fund that. But they have hole in one insurance, and this has been around for like over 100 years. To fund, to insure against these competitions? Yes. That's actually brilliant it insurance. Is, it's brilliant. That's why I wanted to bring it up because I thought it was so smart. And this start, it goes all it goes back over a hundred years, the tradition of it, because back in the days, uh, if you hit a hole in the one, the kind of the tradition like a hundred years ago would be like you would you would have to buy everybody there uh, drinks at the bar. That's just like the way. If you get the hole in one, you have to yeah, buy them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's like, messed up. I know, right? So, <laughs> so you get the hole in one, you buy, you okay. buy, you buy everybody in, in the in the place rounds, and that could get really expensive. And so back then they had okay. this. It started back then this insurance for if that were to happen, that it would get covered, and you wouldn't actually. That have to is come brilliant. Out. You know, insurance companies. If you ever <laughs> like re like insurance companies that are market based, <clears throat> they are the most accurate at predicting. Um, outcomes and statistics because this is all they do. And their job, because they compete with each other, right? Their job is to make make money, but obviously underprice the other competitor. So, so they have to be perfect. And the amount of time and effort they put into that is insane. Isn't there that crazy one out of England that, that you can insure, like a lot of celebrities like can insure really like super random things? J-Lo insured her butt. Yeah, you have like yeah. What is that button. called? Lloyd's of, of London, huh? Yeah, Lloyd's of Lloyd's of London. You guys heard of that company? I have. No, yeah. but that's probably the company you're talking about. With like, you have of uh, what's his face, uh, Troy Palomalo. Palomo, I can't ever say his last Palomalo, name. Palomalo. Yeah, his yeah. the you guy with the long hair that used yeah. to play for Steelers. His Beautiful hair, hair, his hair was yeah. insured. What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can yeah. insure your voice. I heard some some. Yeah, you can insure all this. Yeah, and it's exactly what you said. Yeah, so the exactly. article went deep on on exactly like there's a, a formula for it. Like, mm -hmm. so how do you Levels. figure it out? Cause there's like some hole in one, you get a million dollars. Like there are, there's a range of prizes. The prize could be like a $20,000 prize could be a million dollar prize. So how does the insurance work? Well, there's a formula they plug in based off of like mm -hmm. how much the prize is. And then also the uh, potential of them winning. So if it's an amateur, uh, like a uh, golf thing, it's a one in 12,000 chance that someone could hit uh, a hole in one. If it's a pro tournament, it's a one in 3,000 chance. Mm -hmm. Obviously, much better mm -hmm. golfers, right? And so based off of those statistics plus the uh, how much the prize is, the insurance companies know how much they need to get from all these people that put all these on based on how many they have per year to make sure that they still win. at the And they get, obviously, they have to pay out all the time because people do get whole ones and they do win these prizes. Wow. So they do have to pay out. Yeah, if you want to like figure out your odds of, <coughs> of, uh, of your life, like how long you'll live, go get life insurance. They will predict it better than any doctor. They <laughs> yeah. will. They are so good well, at predicting yeah. like how much they need to charge you to profit based on when you're gonna die. So when you go they get it, squeeze the most out of you. Yeah, you can. look at the like where however they rank you. Like if you're like, oh, am I healthy? You know, I think I'm healthy. Or, yeah, I'm good. <clears throat> Be honest with your stuff. Do your life insurance, and then they'll give you a ranking, and then that's like a reality check. Like yeah. okay, <laughs> yeah, you know, there's some pretty crazy things that Lloyd's of London insures. Uh, a few of them are Keith Richards' hands. Mm. <laughs> 
Bruce wow. Springsteen's voice. Oh my God. Gene Simmons' tongue. Oh. <clears throat> Tom's oh, Tom Jones' chest hair. His chest okay. hair. No. Is a <laughs> yeah. So. Wow, that is really cool. Santa's beard. His chest yeah. hair. Wait, is Santa real? Uh, he is. Oh my gosh. Oh. See That's... now, what I don't, what I don't understand is okay. So if it's insured, so okay, I, I get how like Troy. I guess I guess how the how the beard or chest hair. So if you had like an uh, some sort of a freak accident. Yeah, Tom Jones's microphone sparks and his chest hair catches. Yeah, fire. Send, or it. burns his chest and he can't yeah. even grow back hair anymore. Like then he then he gets money. Then he gets paid out. Apparently, wow. Dolly Parton had a four million dollar <laughs> policy on her breasts on her boobs. Yeah, mm. well, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. four what? million. So it's, it? in case someone steals them. <laughs> I mean, yeah. deflation or something like that. It's, it's, <laughs> that's geez. economics, Doug. It's, 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 it's the opposite of Dude, what's going on right now. Dude, speaking of breasts and all that, there's, okay, boy, do kids, I know I'm going to sound like an old man right now, but they just keep raising the bar on stupid stuff that they do. What? In the UK, so there's this Here challenge. Here old man rant. Here we go. There's, okay, there's always these challenges, right? Like, kids will do this challenge, and you always, and as an adult, you look at it and go, stupid. Like that's TikTok the, stuff or what? Dumb. So there's a deodorant challenge oh, that, that's yeah. happening. I heard, I heard, Have you heard of this? I, I did hear this. So the deodorant challenge is you take deodorant, like this aerosol one, you spray it on your skin, and it's cold. If you've ever done this and you get cold and you put it close, it's freezing cold, okay? Yeah. And the challenge is you hold it on as long as you can. Oh, no, that's not it's what I thought. Okay. Well, like burn your skin. Yeah. So this kid in the UK, I was reading the story, he did it to himself. To, you know, and of course you're with your buddies. And what do you what do you want to do? You want to be? Oh, I'll keep going, bro. <laughs> he froze his nipples off. Oh off, my god! Off. Are you so, serious? So what? Here's the story. So he does it, and his buddies are like, "Go, go, go!" Right? And he does the whole thing. And then one of his buddies, like, you know, what are you gonna do if your if your friend does this with the other? You're gonna go flick his nipple. Right? Oh! <laughs> Flicked his nipple, fell off. No way. Fell off. They just really? like shattered. Both of them fell off. <laughs> no nipples. He goes to class because he's a dude. He's like, I'm, I'm fine, right? Puts his t-shirt on and his friend, everybody in class is like, dude, you got blood on your shirt. Like what's going Finally goes to the doctor and he had, froze his nipples off. So now he has no nipples. No nipples. None. What? From this now he's channel. Johnny no nipples. Oh, there it is. 15. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. That's got to be the, that's, honestly though, that's how you earn like really epic uh, nicknames. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Tommy, Johnny no nipples. Yeah. Yeah. No, no nipples. Justin, Johnny. Yeah, no nipples, Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> Justin, tiny beard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's it. You got to do something like extraordinarily yeah. stupid. That's like a badge hey, of honor. Hey, that's Frozen Tits Johnson. <laughs> frozen Tits. What happened? That, I told you guys about the time my buddy was, uh, he was giving me a tour of his restaurant and introducing me to his staff. And he goes, and that's what he say. He goes, oh, and he was giving them names. Everybody has a nickname. And he goes, and that's yeah. nine. And I'm like, nine? Why is his nickname nine? And he holds his hands up. He's missing a finger. Yeah, dude. Like, of course. Bro, I lived with the guy named no, uh, One Ball Pat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no. You know, I as a kid, like, I remember assholes. us doing like like stupid challenges like this, but not like this. Like not like something that would as dumb as this. They I were like, know, dude. we would get like those uh, like those o o orange like ghost peppers or whatever that like if you take like a little bite of it, like your yeah. mouth is who on can fire. Eat it? Oh. Yeah, who could eat it? You know what I'm saying? And how long could you go without having? Hold on a second. Like the Carolina oh. Reapers. Dude, this no, is I got to call us out. There's no way you're not telling me that when you were like because peak stupidity. It's right For around guys like right, 15, yeah, yeah, 16. Right right. Bro, I seen a guy take a BB gun and shoot his ball point blank. Mm. You know, you know, <laughs> I gotta say something real quick. <laughs> That's what men do. I gotta say something real quick, okay? As stupid as that sounds, that guy who shot himself in the ball, if you guys ever run into him again, he, it's epic, yeah. right? It's it's definitely points. <laughs> I shake his hand, dude. It's, 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 that's why they do it. So you guys can't tell me you didn't do anything You're like like jump your bike off of a cliff or slide down something crazy or do something super dangerous. Like, I mean, of course, we did definitely. some things like that that were. I mean, we. I remember, uh, you know, we built a ramp and we were jumping over each other and taking <laughs> photos underneath. You know, uh, oh, the guy under yeah, the yeah, camera. Yeah. I still have these photos too. <laughs> no, I swear to God, I do. The bunch of bugs, <laughs> tire marks on your bike face. Tires. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I don't know why I still got Dude, him, but I got we, him. We figured yeah. out we figured out you could choke someone out, and so we would choke each other yeah. out. Oh, uh, I remember. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. You choke people. Pass okay, out. I guess that was yeah. pretty stupid. I remember. I remember that when passing, making people pass out was like a thing. Yeah. yeah. And I remember us messing around and doing dumb yeah, stuff. Like I that. did that to people, but I never did. Yeah, it. we smoked a napkin once. And yeah. maybe that's wow. what someone it, said. Hey, what it is is that generations that have already done stuff like that. Like if you're this generation, you're like, well, they've already done the pass out thing. Yeah, they've already done the. The jalapeno thing. Yeah, let's, yeah, we got to yeah. think of something different. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah. The axe spray your nipples off, okay? Dude. Or let's eat 
some Tide Pods. That's so How about extreme. that? <laughs> I haven't. I didn't watch. Uh, I saw that the new Jackass. You said it was stupid, right? Oh, I, I, I was I, almost. Oh, it's it. I watched it, dude. Oh, I'm, is it good? I'm not oh, saying. Dude. I didn't say it was stupid. I just said it was like so many dicks. Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> too many. Yeah. Like, way too. Well, many. they open like, it. There was like the whole first five minute opening is him being. His dick I got is Godzilla. I got to I mean, say it's hilarious. I got to say something because I watched the trailer and Jessica was totally not about it, so we didn't watch it, but. And she's like, they're so dumb. I can't believe whatever. And I'm like, you know what? I, I, I told her, I said, I grew up Dude, with these guys. Though. Yes. I said, I grew up with these guys doing this kind of stuff. They're all old and broken. There's a part of me, maybe this is machismo, whatever. There's a part of me that's like, Mad respect. These dudes are like in their Big late time, 40s, dude. 50s, and uh, like, see, what's his name know. getting hit by a bowl? Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know if it's like a mad. I, I see it and I go like, damn, dude, you must be desperate for money. That's what I, I feel yeah. like. Yeah, that's the sad because part. Because if I, if I, it, even if we did that's that, true. if we did that stuff in our like 20s, and and then we made ourselves a name for ourselves, like Jackass and them, and you know, you have this new generation. There's a group of kids that are are like becoming the same thing, right? And we get famous, we make millions of dollars, like. And we're like 40, 50 yeah. years old now, you know, uh, you know, I, I don't know how they would have to offer a ridiculous uh, amount of money. Something that's going to set my next two generations up for me to go do that to myself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, well, it's like expected in that juvenile phase, right? Right. Because you're like, you're testing each other and it's like this sort of pecking order of like, who's the toughest or you can do the stupidest thing. Yeah. And it's like, it's kind of like that whole growing up process yeah. and a coming of age thing. But then when you see older guys doing it, yeah, there's sort of a sad element to that. Dude, like you, yeah, you didn't it, figure your way out of this. It was, it was a little cheap humor to me too. Like, okay. So they, what they did that was smart was uh, even though Johnny did get in and do some of the stuff, they have like an, an up, coming you know oh, group of smart. four or five that's smart yeah. yeah they orchestrated most of it so yeah. they didn't do most of the the crazy oh, okay. stuff they had other people do a lot of the stuff yeah. but there was some well, so they did some crazy shit they bro. did well and they did some stuff that i thought was like like i think is like what i thought was funny was like the the whole bear thing when he when he they lock him in with the bear dude, like, see i thought that like, was messed up yeah that, like that poor guy dude like I, i'm like <laughs> this guy literally was like you could see a, a, his face of actual terror. Yeah, he thought he was going to eat. See, I, so, and I okay, and, and they're all sitting in the. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, and the guys just bro. They God. put they put they they poured like, honey and peanut butter yeah. and stuff down his pants too. That's like, terrible. yeah, yeah dude. and he didn't know. He didn't know what he was. He what didn't was know coming. he was in for that. He just thought like like bees, they thought bees or something they thought were going to come after him, yeah. and then they'd like, <laughs> they like they opened up a grizzly bear. bear. Like, come I've, out. I've said this before. The it, yeah, men and women generally are different. <laughs> the biggest difference. For men and women is that there's no way women would do this to their friends no way and no, no way they would have a friendship afterwards the <laughs> they, they would I've argue done, it's because they're smarter that's why <laughs> it has to be it's a hundred percent they just that. talk shit about their friends when they're not there yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they do let's be just honest <laughs> come on man they're just as bad it's yeah, just different it is it's different it's totally different i've dude and i know that because i've you know I, i've spent time where i'm like in my room and, and all the girls are doing their thing i'm like i'm out of here right yeah but sometimes i can't leave you know i gotta sit there and listen to them talk shit and it's like whoa this is yeah. what happens. <laughs> yeah. i thought you guys were all innocent yeah. and we just hang out kick each other in the nuts yeah i'm like yeah, yeah. i'm not that friend. hurtful yeah. i wouldn't say that about my friends yeah, we're not we're not mean like that well why, why is your eyebrow shaved yeah. oh i fell asleep yeah. <laughs> something like that yeah, dude. Anyway, speaking of uh of, of balls <laughs> this uh did you oh, guys see the guy great. on tucker carlson who was talking about uh, putting <laughs> sun tanning his balls to increase his testosterone? No. Okay, and everybody's made, made everybody made fun of it and called <sighs> him an idiot. And this is, I hate this because sometimes I'll see people explain something so terribly, like with UV. He, it was, wasn't how is he trying? It to wasn't explained. It? Yeah. He just talked about he's this health guy and talked about how he puts you know sun tans his nuts to raise his testosterone. Everybody's making fun of him. There's a massive amount Which of is it. testicle tanning. It's testicle tanning, but it's also full body uh, red light therapy, uh -huh. which has massive amount of benefits. There is real science to this. Now, I'm not saying go out and expose your nuts to the sun, but red light, red light therapy on the testicles, because red light therapy gets the mitochondria of the cells to operate faster and more efficiently, if you shine it on your testicles, the, the cells of the testicles that help produce testosterone produce more testosterone. And there's studies that show this. So like we work with a company called Juve and we've had several people experiment with this themselves and it does work. But when I saw this guy present it, he did such a terrible job. It just sounded stupid. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, oh, you suntan your, what the hell? 
That makes your testosterone. It's like, man, I wish you would just explain it a little better because now you just made a yeah. Now we're gonna like get a, a bunch of uh, people like they'll hear about that and roll their eyes immediately because yeah. it's just like ridiculous. But I mean, this is kind of how we were going into it. It's like all these magical effects yeah. from red light. Like it just seems like yeah, yeah. ridiculous. I'm finally now doing it on my head because I, yeah. I, I uh, my daughter actually thanks honey for this if she ever watches this one day we're sitting there and she's like wow your hair's uh your hair's thinning i'm like yeah, wow yeah. thanks honey yeah <laughs> i appreciate that you say that you guys feel that way <laughs> what do you feel your hair thinning i know uh, mine is really bro no. you okay i don't it's look just more gray it's not that yeah. bad justin's never gonna lose his hair let's be honest but no, I, it's not that bad hair. right now but i had so much hair before yeah that I have a long way to go. So I think that's what saved me. I had so much hair that when I'd wake up in the morning, every step I'd take, I'd feel my head, my hair shift side to side. Yeah, it was yeah. so thick and so- like, you, your, you, like your son's. Like my son. Yeah, yeah. I had, I had hair just like your son too. You did, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. I remember as a, like his age, like you're going to like-, uh, you like know. And you're mad about it. I used to hate it because yeah. I couldn't comb my yeah, hair. Yeah, I know. That's the irony of it, right? So you'll be careful what you wish for, yeah. right? So. Did, when, now, when yours started <laughs> yeah. to really come out, was it like you like clumps or no. was it just a slow process? No, it was a slow process. Like, because uh, it was funny, there's, I, it's me and my, well, there's three of us, my, my two other best friends uh we all eventually have and they're like I, I mean i would still consider i'm the least bald of the mm. three the three of us and one you know one of us started in like our early 20s like you could see my buddy already receding in his early mm. 20s then my other buddy like in his late 20s i really didn't start to like until 30 like 30 yeah. i really started to, to notice it notice well i take that back i noticed thinning in my like but probably how you feel right now. Okay. So like I had it in my twenties, my late twenties, my, my hair felt still full, but it was thinner than what it was when mm -hmm. I was a kid. Yeah. But then in like when I started to get my thirties and then of course, when I started messing with uh, testosterone, like when I was taking high doses of it uh, and, and competing, I remember, uh, and I've shared this with you off air, uh, when I started, when I tried master on for the first time, Oh, that's a that's a steroid. That's a DHT one derived steroid. Yeah, I think and that, that was, was the first time actually I ever did experience like shampooing my hair and then looking down and like I actually saw like hair. In my You're hair. like, well, I'm ripped. I off. never <laughs> up until that point I was just kind of real s slowly thinning over time. Yeah. You know, I knew the inevitable was coming at one point. Um, it didn't really, I didn't really bother me. It was like whatever. But when I started using uh, Masteron, when I was using, when I was stacking testosterone and stuff. And that's when I, I started that, that freaked me mm. out. Well, so what I'm, what I'm, I'm doing the red light now, but what I've done for a long <clears> time <throat> is, uh, take salt palmetto and then use salt palmetto shampoo. So salt palmetto reduces the conversion of testosterone to DHT and some studies show up to 30%. So current medications for hair loss also do the same thing, just a much stronger, right? So I think finasteride is a, is a drug you could take. That'll do that. Mm. Salt palmetto natural doesn't do it so drastically. And I've been using that for a long time because I think I'd be a lot less hair now had I not been doing that. You know what I was curious of, and this is totally anecdotal, but uh, like growing up, you see that, you know, one of the guys that uh, gets hair first, like facial hair gets yeah. like really hairy or whatever, like always the first, first to, to go bald. Yeah. That, is that like um, DHT? Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's like related. Yeah. DHT is a very androgenic. Uh, you know, I never thought about that. Justin. Hormone. Every single one of my friends. Yeah. That, yeah the, uh, now I think. Now that I'm thinking about it, because you said it, I'm like, you know, what? you're you're right. I think the, the my buddies that did get like facial hair, like in you know middle school, mm -hmm. yeah, were the same ones that ended. That's uh, yeah. You would think it would be the opposite. You would think they are like hairy, real hairy guys, and so they'd have hair sticking around longer. Mm -hmm. yeah. I th I'll probably be like my dad, where he's kind of bald, but not really, uh, you know. But then my grand, actually, well, his dad was bald, bald. <laughs> Yeah. So maybe it'll, I don't. My brother's more like that. My brother. See how is that? Uh, is this, I always heard it was like on your mom's side. Mom's side, but I think uh, that's false. Yeah, it's it's not true because I have my dad's hair still. Well, like, it's, it's, it's supposed to be mom's side. Skip a generation. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm serious. That's what it's supposed to be. I've, I've obviously looked into this stuff, you know? Okay. I, 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 I think it's all BS. Like you guys are amateurs. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Do you think it's BS? Do you think I, I think that's BS. I mean, I think it's hereditary for sure. Yeah. 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 But I think, oh, it comes from your mom's well, side and it skips a generation. Yeah. I think people are making stuff. Yeah, I where do you pin right. that? That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, I, I think it's important to look at your genetics for certain things and then prepare yourself. Like for me, hair loss, maybe. What runs in my family on all sides, all sides is uh, prostate enlargement. 
Uh, everybody oh, yeah. has everybody. My grandfather, my uncles, everybody <clears throat> getting up in the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah. so I've been taking Sal Palmetto for a while, mainly for that, and this, because it, that also helps uh, with that. So I'm hoping to, to stave that off <laughs> for as long as I possibly can, because that would suck. <laughs> now yeah, I was saying, how, how do you feel? I mean, if you all of a sudden started, I mean, if you started to look like me, like would you freak out or huh? what? No, I'm already. I got my wife already, so she can't go anywhere. So, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Oh, I'd, right. Hey, look, I'll tell you what. You look pretty tough. I'll, I'll be ripped. Head, you know, yes. say I'll try, I'll be ripped and bald. So Katrina I, was actually the reason why I, I held on to my hair for as long as I did. I wanted to shave it a long time ago. Yeah. Long time ago. She didn't want you to. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like your hair. It was fine. You. Can't so how do you feel now? That you're bald. You're like. Damn. I prefer it. Oh. Yeah. Hell, it's easy maintenance. You kidding me? And Dude, I love to have a shaved. You know, I have, head. A, I have a, you know, I have a, uh, other than my psoriasis, which was that. You was have a nice shaped head. I yeah, just look yeah. too much like an angry white guy. You know, like I can't do it. Yeah, there's a little, yeah, there's a little you, white. Yeah, I have to like look tone it down. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 You got to be more like your tattoos, your face, yeah. shaped yeah. head, bald head, and a tiny beard. Bro. It's not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have to. <laughs> we'd have, I'm fucking doubling it. We'd have, hey, we'd have to apologize for you all the time. Here's my friend. He's not uh, skinhead exactly. or white supremacist. I yeah, swear he to God. Doesn't, yeah, he doesn't go in any of those groups. He's uh, a really nice guy. I know he looks like yeah. it, but so. no. I wanted to ask you something, Adam. Yeah. Uh, if you don't mind me bringing this up. Go uh, I, 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 I know not. you've been experimenting with um, the red juice from Organifi to help with how you've been feeling. Yeah, yeah. And so I'd, uh, maybe some feedback. Well, yeah, I mean, at first, if the audience didn't hear, like, my, the last, you know, episode or two, I can't remember when I brought it up, but that I had came, after my flu, I naturally came off of the crate, uh, crate, uh, Kratom and also um, caffeine. caffeine. Yeah. And it was uh, kind of a nightmare. Like, I didn't realize how bad it was going to hit me. Uh, and so, and instead of me going right back is what I've decided to do is like, well, let me use this opportunity of the five days of having the flu and then not having any of that stuff to completely kind of wing off for a while or wean, wean off for a while and, uh, using the red juice. So, and I was started using it, uh, like right. So right now, like kind of for the audience, what would I normally would do is I'd have either a cup of coffee or energy drink and I would take some Kratom, like the mix of Kratom and caffeine is a, a beautiful blend. And it is. We're true. not recommending this. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this is just me being honest. This is not me telling anybody what you should do at all. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't do what I'm doing, right? So because it was a pain in the ass to get off of it. So uh, right now, that's what. And what I noticed was my. And it's weird. Like my 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 temperature is is really. I'm hot, cold, back and forth. Mm. I'll feel cold, but you then get I'll the cold sweats. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be all cold, and then I'll I'll start sweating. It's like so. It's real. It's my a CNS response. It's really really mm. weird. Um, and you know, I know what you've talked about with the adaptogens in inside. Yeah. The, there's ra rhodiola in there and some, and some other stuff. And in it's, the, it's in really the, in a good adaptogen based in the uh, red juice. Drink, yeah. I know, I know, I know you've said that before. So I started taking it and I was like, Oh, that, I think it's helping. Like, it takes the edge off. Yeah. It's not a replacement. No, so no, no. no. Oh it God, no, like it's not. Before. It doesn't make me feel like what I felt like on caffeine and Kratom. What I, what I, it, 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 it mitigates that those crazy swings yep. I was feeling. Yep. Or at least I thought it did. I wasn't sure until yesterday because yesterday I opted not to make the drink. So I have it right. I, I mean, I just finished it. It, just, it was inside the, in this, this wasn't water. This was the, the red juice uh, that I also mixed with our LMNT. And when I do that, it definitely makes a, cause I, and I didn't know it. And this is how I was, it's when I went, when I didn't do it, I didn't do it. And I noticed, oh my God, yesterday I was cold inside here, but then my back was like drenched in sweat. And I'm like, oh my God, what the fuck? So Taking that as is, I can feel how. Yeah, I, I've been recommending for people who want to get off caffeine because it's. Imp I think it's a good idea to go off caffeine every once in a while because obviously you get a ta you get you develop a tolerance. You need more and more, and then you get more side effects, less great effects. It loses its magic because caffeine, when your receptors are fresh, beautiful feeling. You have a little coffee or whatever, <laughs> and you're like, oh my god, I feel so great. But over time, you know, you just use more and more. So you got to go off and going off caffeine sucks. I hate it. I hate going off caffeine. It's like three days of hell and no energy, no motivation, bad mood. The red juice takes the edge off. So this is what I've been recommending to people. When you go off caffeine, drink the red juice two or three times a day yeah. and you will, you're not going to feel like you're on caffeine. No. But you'll the, you're not going to feel like you want to kill the someone. With, the withdrawal symptoms that you have from the lack of caffeine mm -hmm. in you, it, they'll be much much milder in comparison. Mm -hmm. And that's what I noticed was when I didn't yesterday, I, was, I paid for it, and I was like, oh shit, wow, that really made a yeah. difference. And just from drinking it, this you morning, have maybe another like four days or five days, and then you're you're back to. 
I mean, I already feel every day yeah. getting a little bit easier, a little bit better. I mean, the 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 five days with the flu was like, I mean, that like was the worst. Yeah. yeah. So, and I think I got the worst of it during that time. I mean, it was like constant migraines. Um, and then since then, it's just been it's been more annoying now. Now it's like it's not. I'm not really on edge. It's not really. Yeah. It's just like this weird. And Katrina's like tripping out at home. She's like, I, I turned on the fire last night. She goes, "You do know it's uh, 72 in the house right now, right?" And she, uh, she's like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm just cold. And I'm like, so I'm looking at She's like, that's This weird. is not you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's like, that she's is like, not you I just you need you all. to hug me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude, so I used to bring up uh, just random facts uh, sometimes on the podcast. You got and some good I haven't ones? done that in a while. And I do, have, do. I do have some pretty juicy ones. Oh, good. Let's do it. Yeah, that. so, okay. Do you guys know the fastest animal on the planet? Cheeto. Wait. On land or water? Or air? No, all. Oh, oh, falcon. Fal yeah, it's got to be a falcon. Okay. Yeah. It, it's per peregrine falcon. Right? Okay. How fast? 200 miles an hour. Whoa. I didn't yeah. know it was that fast. Yeah, have you ever, by the way, you ever seen the shape? It dives. You ever seen the shape of a falcon? Because they've analyzed the shape of the falcon as it dives. And this is how they designed yes, some the, of our, those I think, stealth. That I was going to bring up. Oh, good. <laughs> Stealing your <laughs> What a dick. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. It's just, yeah, it's like a... Uh, uh, was so it's, it this is what you get when you read encyclopedias all day long. You know <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's like this cone that, like, I guess it like it dampens a lot of the the, the shockwave vibration. Yeah. On the way down. So yeah, that that was like part of the the jet engine they modeled after that uh, in its nose. I didn't know it gets that fast though. I know. Me too. either. You yeah. know what's crazy about that? This is the crazy part about it. It's not the speed. That's wild. It's that it it can control itself and it can target because yes. what they the reason why they do that is they hunt birds yeah and they, they come they in so fast birds. oh yes. yeah yeah so they're super predators like that from from aerial attacks oh they're not yeah. like eagles where they'll get mice and rabbits and no they don't really they're, they're not as interested in rodents yeah. oh, so yeah, you're yeah, a bird you're already flying fast right. and a 200 mile an hour missile hits you and takes you out see the shape on the very right yeah. see how it's shaped yeah. doesn't that kind of look like a stealth fighter yeah from totally. the side Wild, right? I think they're just cool. It's funny just because I heard, I actually heard these when I was at that uh, Natural History Museum and this guy had one and was showing the kids <clears throat> and it was such a trippy looking bird. It was so cool. Uh, but the guy kind of looked like a bird guy. Do you what, know what I mean? What like, mean? Like his face uh, looks Sal like kind of looks like a bird guy. No, <laughs> Sal. Sal, if, if, you, if you could just picture Sal with a, a like a, 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 a like a leather thing on his yes. arm and like a feather the in his leather ear, thing, or the like other one of those, arm like, had like a, a, like a leather hat. If you had like yeah. one of those big leather hats, yeah. Sal this guy like had, a, a, had guy. a bird tattoo that went all the way up his arm, right? And he's got like the long face, and he had like an actual mohawk too. <laughs> it went up like this, and I'm like, "Dude, what are you, a Blue Jay? You know, like, <laughs> come on, guy." I and like, so I was like, I was like asking him, I'm like, okay, "Oh, so is this? this like, guy like an are you able to have like pets? Bird. These for pets?" And he's like, "Oh no, no, you'd never do that." I'm like, "This guy has them as a pet. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, this falcon's your pet." Dude. I, so I don't know what a bird guy <laughs> would look like. I just described him. You'd have a, a big leather hat. I would. You'd have a leather thing on your on your your arm right, right here. Yeah, and like so a, maybe a feather. Like those like those like leather like trench coats that like have the shoulders that yeah, kind of go that out is like true that. they do do that yeah. yeah what about snake guys you ever seen snake oh dudes? those are the weirdest yeah they walk around like the boardwalk with a snake around their neck why yeah what yeah are you doing, dude they, they usually i mean have like puka shell thing like, like yellow they yellow like contact they eyes to, yeah they're, they're like nickelback fans usually yeah. the, <laughs> i don't know it's just a weird correlation the craziest uh pet owners pictures i've ever seen you guys ever seen those dudes in africa that have uh hyenas as dogs no. You know how big a hyena is? Oh, yeah. They're walking a hyena. It's got like a, a rope looking muzzle. And I'm like, that's your pet? That's terrifying. Dude. You got to see it, Doug. Look this up. I Doug, didn't know that. It. I didn't know those are, those are allowed. They're like African gang members and they have hyenas. And so, so instead of like, Pit bulls or Rottweilers or whatever. Man, they have that's hyenas. A flex, dude. Walking around with a hyena. Yeah, you imagine you got your pit. You're like, yeah, I'm bad. Yeah, you got yeah. a hyena. Ugh. Eat your dog and look at it. <laughs> show, show them with the with the like the ones where they're walking them with the oh, muzzle. He's and right, stuff. There, right there. He's yeah, dude. They're huge in real life because you always yeah. see them with like lions and stuff. You look think like, lions the are the only thing stopping them, really. Yeah, dude. That's his pet. Hail no. Hail well, to the no. Yeah. Would, would it would it uh, 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 like a domestic dog would be able to hang with that at all? No, yeah, any chance at all? No, not way. any breed. No, dude. Fun fact about hyenas: uh, they got a faux <laughs> penis. They have a what? A what? Faux penis. They don't a have faux, a real one. The, the the girls. Oh, what? Yeah, what? yeah. yeah what? they're they're what? like they're like alpha. Um, and so like it, usually one of the pack leaders is like a, a female. 
Well, what's a faux penis? Fake. So they have something that looks like something a, that looks like it looks it. like a penis, but yeah. it's not on the females. So they're dark. Right. Yeah. So it's like a natural strap on type of deal. And like do they use real. it? I, that's a good question. I don't. I haven't seen the video. Mm. So. <laughs> See that guy right there? Like oh, he's got a machete and a, and a hyena. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty. That's yeah. pretty tough. That's a tough looking gang member yeah. right there. I too. want a cool photo like that. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a cool photo. Wouldn't you black and white photo like that hanging up in your house? No. <laughs> no, the coolest it's like an album cover. No, yes, the, the that other is cool, like an album cover. That's the cool. other coolest photo. Oh, there's a fake dick. Look at that. I told you guys. <clears throat> it's called a she penis. Google uh Doug, can you Google <laughs> she penis? <laughs> I, I'm stopping right <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you know, it's the, Doug the animals engine. are weird. <laughs> the, the, we the, do. the other cool pet owners or those dudes, the falcon owners, I don't know if they're in the Mo they're like Mongolian. Oh and they're yeah. like on a horse. The, the hunters, yeah. And there's oh, like yeah, a, they use the 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 either falcon I think it's a falcon falcon or a golden eagle yeah. something that's got to be the toughest picture I've ever seen in my yeah, life I've seen that like before. that's a, that's a dude that you're like alpha yeah. yeah you're about as tough as it gets watch <laughs> out dude yeah hey real quick you got to go check out one of our partners live on labs they make supplements that actually get absorbed by the body through using pharmaceutical technology liposomal technology and right now if you go to live on labs through our link you can get free lipoglutathione when you bundle it with B complex and vitamin C. So that's happening right now. Go to mindpumppartners.com, click on live on labs and get hooked up with that particular uh, discount. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First caller is Chris from British Columbia. Chris, what's happening? How can we help you? Uh, there's the thing like I, so first things first, I would like to thank you guys for all the, the knowledge that you share with me for free on YouTube as far as like um, mobility and technique and all those stuff. Great. Um, now, the thing is like I've been working out for, for the past couple of years and no matter what I do, my traps and it's always taking over when I'm doing like shoulder press or bench press and it's, it's getting annoying because I cannot feel anything in my shoulder or anything in my um my, my chest not not depending where, where it is and i'm trying trying to see like what 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 approach should i have okay so you're you're you feel like your traps are overactive because you don't feel your shoulders or because you feel i think you like feel tightness you tighten and, your traps the whole time you're yeah do you feel like tightness and stuff in your neck like what do you what do you mean yeah like the the, the neck is the neck is always tight tight the, the trap was tight and the thing is like I cannot like uh, squeeze my shoulder blade properly mm, okay uh, 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 I, I get what's happening issue, uh. he's, yeah. he's shrugging up and he's rolling forward when he's bench pressing yeah. so you probably don't feel it in your chest at all you feel it more in your shoulders and traps is that what you're trying to say Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. I, I would common, by the way. Yeah. I, you. You. You know. Really, what you want to do is you want to strengthen the opposing action. So a light row or like a cable or a band row would be ideal for something like this where you pull the shoulder blades back and down. Mm -hmm. Okay. So back and down, like you're trying to put your shoulder blades in your back pockets and focus on that squeeze. So when you do a rep, what you do is you, you pull the shoulder blades back and down, squeeze, hold for like three seconds, come forward with the repetition and then come back and then repeat that and strengthen that particular movement. Now, when you do overhead presses, you can try to keep the shoulder, what they call packed, but I would rather just do your, your overhead presses as you normally do. With your bench presses, you want to focus on your shoulder blades coming down and back to secure the position as you bench press. You may have to go lighter on the exercise in order to do that, but really it's going to be about strengthening the opposing movement because what might be happening is upper traps are stabilizing your shoulder girdle more because some of the other muscles that should be stabilizing aren't necessarily uh, as involved as they as they should be, so it's just taking over. I like to. I'd actually like to see him do a Z press instead of a traditional shoulder press. So if I I would I would I would drop the shoulder press and do the Z press. I would make sure when you're doing the priming movements that Sal's talking about is to go really light. Mm -hmm. The mistake that some people make when they hear that is they go they they do it the way they would train, like trying to get sore. Or you know, build muscle. Like we're we're trying to uh, retrain a recruitment pattern in this case, and so really taking time and going light and squeezing the position that Sal's talking about. So when he says uh, put your shoulder blades back into your back pockets, 
you you want to put emphasis on that. Like you could squeeze and hold for like five seconds. So I'd, I'd have you as a client. I did normal and, and I love to do like a seated row and normally take a client like you that's that's really tense and tight and shoulders roll forward. And I'd actually put my knee in your back and actually pull your shoulder girdle back so you could feel where I want you to go. And then I'd have you take a real light weight, draw it in, get into that position. And then I'd want you to get like an isometric contraction where you squeeze real hard and feel feel those muscles back there for about five seconds and then release out then come back into that position and we're using a really really light weight mm -hmm. you, you could almost do it with no weight technically so go light and really concentrate on that squeeze portion prime like that before you go into a, a more traditional movement like mm -hmm. your bench press yeah just to add on to that like exactly what they said but also too i like the um uh, farmer walks that are more postural driven. So if you can, you know, shrug your shoulders back to press your shoulder blades down, everything that they're saying with that, but like hold weights at your side, maintain that posture and walk and focus on just staying tense there in your back and your shoulder blades and keeping them down um, as a priming movement as well to add in uh, beforehand and then keep strengthening and reiterating that strength in that position during seated rows. Chris, do you have Prime Pro? No, I, I don't. Okay, I'll send. I, I, was a, I was about to, but I, was, I, I didn't know if I could could help or anything. So I just. It'll definitely help you, and we'll send that to you. And in there, there's some shoulder and shoulder blade mobility movements that might help. Another good movement. I, this is this one actually might be the perfect one for you. Is a prone cobra, mm -hmm. um, prone cobra with no weight, just to work on that downward. You know what's called you know retraction and depression of the scapula, just to oppose that upper trap movement and just develop some more stability in that direction so you don't feel so uh, you know quote unquote overactive in the upper trap so Re we'll send that to you resist the temptation to want to go heavy on any movements right now uh i like really just work on uh, on the form the technique the squeezing and pausing in the position that we're talking about uh we can load we can really load later on uh first let's get the the you in the place where you can uh, intrinsically hold yourself in that position uh, without having to do these exercises, right? So that's the the goal is that you should be able to one day walk into the bench press and retract and depress naturally on your own and, and hold that position without anything. So until then, uh, when we're priming and we're doing these movements, stay light, stay really light and really focus on on the technique more so than trying to load the bar. I was just wondering, like, uh, do you think that kettlebell halo could help or not? Yeah, you know, with you got to do you more correctional kinda, exercise. Yeah, you yeah. know, I really think prone cobra is going to be your your bet, uh, and the, and those really prone light cable rows. Prone cobra, handcuff with rotation, wall circles, all these things are in Prime Pro, by the way. Mm -hmm. So Prime Pro has got these movements in there. Follow the stuff, like Sal's saying. That's that's re regards to your your shoulders, and the and those movements that are in there. Stick with that. We're sending it to you for free. So start following that and then report back to us after you've been doing that and how you feel. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to follow what you guys say because, like, I know that, like, all of those, like, mobility stuff, like, you guys know more than, than, than anybody. Well, as as, yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for calling Thank in. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, Chris. Yeah, this highlights something important, which is uh, two things. Gonna, you I know more than anybody in the world. The world but, you know, no, you know what this highlights? This highlights that the fact that you can do an exercise that's supposed to work something and say, oh, this is what I'm going to do because I know, I know I'm supposed to work on this. Yeah. But do it in such a way where it does the opposite, right? So I see this with clients where I'd get a client, same issue. Oh, my neck is tight, whatever. And I'd have them do a row. And I'd put them in the right position, like you said, Adam, and I'd squeeze their shoulders, blades down and back for them, have them feel what it feels like. Then I'd let go and I'd say, do five more reps on your own. And they'd go right back yeah, yeah. to doing it the wrong way. And what happens when you do it the wrong way is you make your problem worse. Yeah. You're doing the right exercise, yeah. but you're doing it in a way to where it's going to make your problem worse. This is why I kept saying the, forcing it. This is why I kept saying the weight thing too. Yeah, yeah. Go, because, you got to go really light. Yeah, because it, it, the just any if it, you make the weight challenging at all, and you're that you go back to your old you're that person yeah. you're talking about. They're they're going to fall right into that trap. Like if you can't if you can uh, barely if you can't hold it in that position with uh, little to no resistance, adding a bunch of resistance is going to make yeah. it worse. Yeah. Well, yeah, I agree with that, but also to like to your point of having to kind of manually press their well, that's shoulders. Why you're, that. you're, that's why you're, like you're you're walking bringing up yeah weights to hold the size. So that like makes a lot of that. yeah, that makes a lot of sense because now you're using gravity to yeah. help. 
put them in the right position. So that makes that yeah. makes sense. To, that is the thing that makes sense to load. So yeah. I guess that's a good point. You, we, we have well, to, the, be, the only, to be able to you don't want to right you don't want to load something that is pulling the body back into the position that you're trying to work yourself out of. Well, right. But if you can load the body in a position that's going to be advantageous to the position you're trying to get to, that makes sense, which is what you recommend. Well, the counter to that is, well, when you're holding a heavy weight, even in a depressed position, gravity means that the upper traps still have to stabilize. Right? You're still You'll activating feel right. the upper traps. But the, the, the counter to that counter is they are activating, but they're activating in a lengthened position. Yes. And so a lot of people think that because a muscle is tight, that means it's stronger. No, it oftentimes means it's either weaker or it's only strong in a shortened position. So sometimes like a farmer's walk, what it would do is it would make the trapezius get stronger in that lengthened position. Mm -hmm. Now his body feels a little more comfortable yes. stabilizing. So it doesn't position. like automatically like fall back to that like yes. shortened tense position. So you have to be able to train to, to get your yeah. body acclimated to that. Totally, yeah. totally. But I mean, you see, I used to see people do this all the time. You can do rows, which are supposed to fix your posture. In ways you that do them wrong yeah. to make your shoulders come forward. Exactly. So it's, well, it's yeah, about how you do the movement. Yeah. Our next caller is Landon from California. Landon, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys, uh, first off, huge fan. Ever since I traded in uh, Athlean X and Greg Uset for you guys, I've gotten pretty amazing results. So mm. thank you for that. Very important upgrade. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so my first question is: Is it okay for your shoulders to click on lateral raises? I I feel I do a pretty good job keeping my scapula retracted and my shoulder mobility isn't the best on like dips, but for my overhead press and dumbbell press, it's pretty good. And I was just wondering if I should make that a priority to stop the clicking. And my second question is how much protein daily do you need to maintain muscle at maintenance calories? Because I, every time I look it up, I get information on growing or maintaining my cut but nothing for just maintaining flat out. Yeah. Okay. So let's start with the, the first question. Uh, you don't need to lock your shoulder blades back and down when you do a shoulder, uh, uh, a raise, a lateral raise. The shoulder blades can move with the raise. What I would recommend you do is move your position. So your hands either, if, if they're at your sides, you can move them forward a little mm -hmm. bit or you can move them back a little bit. So Kind of find a position that feels more comfortable as you do your raises. This is clicking forward. This bit, is why I like the pouring the out the milk yeah. cue. Well, I mean, that could also be causing the issues. Like clicking isn't necessarily a bad thing if it doesn't hurt, but in some cases it starts to feel uh, uncomfortable. So I'd say move your position around to see if you can find a position where it feels uh, a little bit better. And it's a little different from person to person, but you don't have to be like a robot in this position where it's locked back and you're not moving the scapula at all. The scapula moves with the shoulder, uh, with the humerus, uh, and it, there is a movement that should be allowed to some extent. So, um, and I know we're always told to lock things in a position, like when you bench press and whatever, and there's definitely some truth to that, but if we get a little overzealous and then move, and then we start to force ourselves into positions that don't feel comfortable for our, for our own bodies, that's okay. sometimes when a problem um, can arise. So yeah, move your arm a little bit around, forward, back, Elbows up, elbows down a little bit, rotate the hand a little bit, see if you can find a position that feels comfortable. As far as protein is concerned, you know, maintaining really is a balance between building and losing muscle. So there is no maintaining muscle. Your body's constantly going through a process of adapting, of breakdown and, you know, what's called protein synthesis and, and degradation, right? So breakdown and building. And the balance of that is what maintaining looks like. I it, I would always err if you're going on maintenance calories. I would err on the side of trying to build higher protein intake yeah. within that. So you know, closer to a gram of protein per pound of body weight. Even if you don't ultimately build muscle on the scale, it's also going to help you stay leaner, more satiated, and it'll tip the scales towards you know, quote unquote, maintaining because. Again, it's a balance between building and losing. So I hope that makes sense. Len, have you ever uh, have you ever done the cue where of the pouring out the milk when you do your lateral raise? Have you ever heard that? Yeah, cue? yeah. I, I use that cue, and uh, my shoulders will still like pop like okay. uh, about ninety percent of the time. But I guess if that's not really an issue for it to click, then I guess I'm probably doing it right then. Yeah, if it doesn't hurt, it's probably not. But try moving your try finding the position that feels comfortable for you. You got to try doing that. All right. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. That makes sense. Do they still click when you're unloaded? Yeah. Even, yeah. Even with no weight, like they're popping right now. 
Mm. Okay, and you feel the pop near the near the the uh, well, top of the shoulder yeah, where the it's like right here. Like if I put my hand in it, I can feel it. Show us, Doug. Yeah, yeah. Where's he's he pointing to? Emulate. No, no. no. Where's he feel right, it? Right in here. Yeah. In the back. Uh, no, by the right clavicle. Hip and shoulder. I think it's right here yeah. in this part. Yeah, right you could try leaning forward a little bit, yeah. bringing the hands a little far further I forward, think coming forward a bit, like in help. between a front raise and a lateral raise. And oh, really? I was worried that it would hit my front delt too much if I bring my arm too forward. Not necessarily, depending on the angle of your upper body. Um, how, do, up, how do upright rows feel? Oh, they feel pretty good, actually. I always so, heard them uh, demonized, but I nah, do. Them, they feel pretty good. Nah, and that's a and that you're going to hit a lot of lateral delt with uh, upright rows. So if those feel, if you like upright rows, they feel comfortable. You don't feel the popping. That's a great example. You're a great client that I'd be like. We don't have to do a ton of lateral raises if what we can do uh -huh. upright rows and develop your. It's also like a fa face pulls. Face yeah, pulls face can do that too mm -hmm. with the rope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Yep. Thanks, guys. No uh -huh. problem. Man. Thank you, man. Have a good day. You too. Yeah, I, uh, this is, a, again, an important point. There's, you know, there's textbook form, which I think Individual generally- variances apply. Yes. So generally go by textbook form. But then if there's something with you that feels a little different, you know, adjust the positioning a bit to see if you feel uh, better or worse. Because laterals is one of those exercises where it can look different from person to person. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's an isolation exercise. I've seen this with curls, like another exercise nobody ever thinks about. But for some people, a fully supinated wrist hurts their 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 wrists or the bones at the bottom of their uh, of their arm and so an easy curl bar tends to work a little better or dumbbells i can be like that if i go really supinated sometimes it'll bother my wrist a little bit just i, I also example. think there's a difference between clicking and popping right so mm -hmm. clicking sometimes is like popping is breakdancing right? well, yeah. no but i mean popping sometimes could just be <laughs> air in your joints yeah, yeah. so and, and if it doesn't hurt and just has that kind of popping sound there's no that's not a big yeah. deal whatsoever uh, clicking and hurting, I'm a little more concerned about right. positioning that, and making sure we're addressing. I would definitely alter it if there was pain. Yeah. So, it, I mean, th that it does matter, his feedback on, does this hurt? Does it feel more like popping? Or does it feel like your shoulder blades are like clicking? Yeah, like part of me would want to investigate that a bit in terms me of too. Like, the full rotational range of motion and like uh, how much um, control and tension that uh, can be uh, applied like through each like individual angle. Well, to that that point, your like wall circles yeah. would be a great way yeah, to, to investigate it. Yeah, no, I think it's a, we should have given him Prime Pro, and we should have told him. You know, maybe we can still just send it to him and then give him an Especially email. Especially since he stopped listening to those other guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We got <laughs> yeah. So maybe we'll, you know, obviously he'll listen to this. Yeah. So then we're gonna hook you up. We're with gonna the, award him. For we're that, gonna hook yeah. you up with Prime Pro and uh, something to investigate. And like Justin was saying, yeah. is do some wall circles. Really follow the video how he does. In fact, you can actually watch the video. You did that in the Prime uh, free yeah, webinar the too, free right? Webinar. So if you're a listener and uh, my, maps. Prime, no, no. Maps Prime webinar. That one, mapsprimewebinar.com. Uh -huh. And Justin does the wall circles and he really breaks down uh, how to do them properly technique wise. Um, great exercise to investigate this and see if there's a breakdown somewhere on one side or if you feel it, uh, if you feel any sort of pain or you can't do the wall circle. Good thing to prime before you do those movements. Our next caller is Shane from Washington. Shane, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys. Uh, hey, I want to say, first of all, thanks for having me on here. And uh, I really do appreciate everything that you guys do. Uh, I've learned a lot. Um, my question for you is this, um, when I'm lifting, I I'm finding that I, I kind of hold my breath on heavier lifts. So is there a proper breathing technique or, or does it affect um, my lifts? You know, if, if holding my breath is that making the load heavier. Um, you know, I basically, I'm just curious if there is a, a proper way to breathe while lifting. And if so, what kind of effects does that have? Yeah. Uh, breathing should feel pretty natural for yeah. the most part, but, <laughs> yeah. but I look, here's the deal. The reason why you hold your breath when you're lifting heavy is because you're, you're bracing your core. You're trying to create stability in your core, really, really heavy reps, like a single rep. It's okay to hold your breath. In fact, you're supposed to just when you stop the rep, take a couple breaths before you do another one. So don't hold your breath and do five reps. Hold your breath on that one rep, come up, take a few breaths, breathe in, brace, hold your breath, do another rep, and so on. If you're doing high rep sets, you want to breathe. You do want to breathe out while you're doing the repetition, but while keeping your core tight, okay? Mm -hmm. So you're not just loosely breathing out. You're holding everything tight and breathing out whoosh, yeah. like this. Yeah, really, really tight. And, you know, martial artists will do like a key eye when they throw a punch or a kick. You'll hear boxers breathe out, psst, you know, when they throw yeah. a punch. What they're doing is they're keeping their core tight 
while expressing power. So it is something you can practice. The other part too, Shane, is don't overthink it. I see people overthinking breathing, which is, it's like right now, like, oh, like start to think about Super how you're- problematic. Yeah, like start thinking about how your eyes are blinking right now and, and then you'll start to feel really awkward yeah. really quickly. So right. don't overthink it too much. If you find no. yourself like getting dizzy or whatever, yeah, definitely remind yourself yeah. to take a breath, but overthinking breathing um, oh. can you start to get a little funny. This is why I've always been hesitant to, you know, really coach that yeah. because yeah, it's like, it, it, it's got to come natural to you, but also you just really need to consider like how you can brace uh, when you have that kind of demand on your body. And so, uh, you know, there's just some things like I, I used to tell people to kind of try and breathe through their teeth. So it's like, you're, you're tensing up, but you're, you know, uh, exhaling at least like with that, that tightness in mind. Yeah. Uh, but really, I mean, it's an in individual experience. So just make sure it's natural. Uh, okay. and, and you're just considering, yeah, that breaking mechanism, uh, uh, a bracing mechanism rather, uh, is at the forefront. When my clients would ask me this exact question, I would say, the most important part of, about breathing is that we do it. That's what I'd say to them. It's like, and you do it as natural as possible. Now, there are some things that I think could help uh, outside of actually the, you know, breathing while you're exercising and actually doing things to train yourself to get better at this. Like, this is where like the drawn maneuver and learning how to do what Sal said is learning how to brace your core and breathe at the same time. Like we could practice that right now. While we're sitting here talking, I, I just brace my core, but yet I'm still able to talk and communicate. Yeah. So that's that's something you should you should learn how to do. You want to be able to can I tighten up my core? I've been doing it the whole time since I said it and still have a conversation, still breathe naturally. You want to be able to do that so that when you do the higher rep ranges like Sal was saying where I'm doing 10 to 15 reps, I'm bracing my core to for safety and to keep myself rigid, but then I'm also still able to breathe in and out. That's a that's an important technique to be able to learn how to do. So I would practice that. But I hold my breath when I do, uh, you know, uh, five by fives, and I like if I'm doing five by five heavy squats, I take in a deep breath, and then I hold my breath, at the, and then as I come out of the squat, you you hear me breathe out or you grunt. Yeah, like grunting is yeah. is that is okay. tense yeah. breathing, right? And then, exactly. at the, and then at the top of the, I, I stand up there with the weight on my shoulders for a second, kind of get catch my breath again, brace, hold it, and then and then I breathe again at the top. So. You can hold your breath through single reps like that. There's nothing wrong with that, and I think most like your most of your heavy lifters uh, will do that. Uh, when you're in higher rep range, you're obviously not going to hold your breath for 15 reps. Or you're I mean, gonna, you can. You'd have to take two breaths in between to be yeah, a long set, and you're <laughs> and that's probably risking passing out doing something yeah. like that. That's where you want to learn how to brace the core while also just breathing naturally. And I agree with Sal. I try to get my clients not to overthink this. I'll be like, listen, if we're breathing, we're fine right now. We'll get to the learning how to brace and breathe at the same time. So long as you do that, I don't want my client holding their breath for yeah, 15 your, reps. Your instinct is to like tense and grunt when you lift something heavy. That's because your body's trying to do that, right? Your body's trying to stabilize your core yeah, protect while your let the breath out. So, and again, I talked about it in martial arts. I talked about it in boxing. I know in, in yoga, I think it's called a, if I'm not, if I'm saying it, I hope I'm saying it right, ujjayi breath, I believe, where you breathe through the back of the throat. All these practices, really what they're teaching is this, this controlled tense. Because then there's a relaxed breath out where uh, everything's kind of, and that's a sigh, right? We're not trying to do that when we're trying to maintain, you know, core stability. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, I fight Muay Thai. So I'm doing the, you know, hard breathes out when I'm oh, throwing you, punches. Yeah, so yeah, bro, you do that it. same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah cool. And I, you know, I'm tensing my core so much. So I'm just concentrating on, I don't want my back to blow out or something. So I, I do feel like I'm, you know maybe over 10 scene or something, but I just didn't know if it was negatively affecting my ability to lift. If I was starving my muscles of oxygen or whatnot, but no, it sounds no, like if, that's not the case. If you're not seeing stars, you're not getting dizzy and, and you don't, you know, then you're, you're probably okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Appreciate right. it. Now, Shane, real quick, before you hang up here, I noticed in your question that you wanted to grab the no BS six pack formula. Did you get that already? Uh, I did. I don't have the, um, the little, whatever the roller in the ball. So I'm going to hold off. Okay. Um, so right now, yeah, I'm doing the, the anabolic and then kind of a, a segue into this. I, I was going to do the performance. Cause like I said, I'm doing movie tie and I'm trying to gain some muscle, but I don't want to gain a lot of mass because I don't want that to, you know, affect my, my ability and you know, the weight classes. So performance would probably be my next in line. Is that going to be something that I can just kind of keep running? Yep. Um, yeah. Okay. That's kind of my goal that's there. A very, so. Yeah. It's an ideal Perfect. program for. Yeah, it's got four phases. So yeah. yeah, you'll you'll be able to run. That's that kind of like the athlete. Good. You got program, it. Yeah. You yeah. got it, Shane. We'll, we'll send that to you. Okay. Because I wanted to give you something. That's why I asked. 
Hell yeah. Thanks, man. You I mean, it. can I ask you guys, I, you know, I, I love the podcast. I literally listen to you guys every day and I like the science. Do you guys have any recommendations on like resources to kind of learn the the science of this stuff, you know, any book recommendations or well, how many without epi- having to go to college? How, how many episodes deep are you into Mind Pump? Yeah, I'll, I mean, I'm, I just have it on repeat, so I'll just use that, I suppose. I mean, seriously, though, I mean, uh, people ask okay. ask me that all the time, and I'm like, are you kidding me? I got a fucking Sal I got to talk yeah. to every day for the last six <laughs> well, years. we've all like, been spi- I'm not reading. I'm not reading any more science articles than yeah. that. You know, <laughs> if you go to, plenty. You know, if you go to science, sciencedaily.com, they'll post recent studies on almost any topic you can think about, including fitness and health. So you go a little sciencedaily.com and you can like, you can read for hours and hours and hours if you want. That's, that's one of my favorite resources. Super training is, is a book that you could look into for all the Soviet studies on, oh, on super training. Yeah. There you go. Sweet. Thanks you guys. I really appreciate you a lot. Gotcha. You got it. Your breathing's funny because it's simultaneously very important. You do it right. When you exert yourself, and you you exhibit power. It's also simultaneously something you don't want to overthink all the time. Oh yeah, because <laughs> it'll start to mess. You I, up, I you think know? it also matters where you're at in your journey, right? So that, I would get this question all the time from like my beginner clients, mm. that especially my ones that would like go and like research themselves and try and figure out like, hey, yeah. I heard I'm supposed to breathe this way yeah. on the negative, and that, and like they'd yeah. be, and then you have me do these, and, and I'd be manipulating tempo, so it was confusing them. They're like. What am I supposed to do on these like five second negatives you have me do? Like, so they're all confused. I'm like, listen, don't overthink the breathing thing. You're breathing. I'm watching you. So just keep doing what you're doing. We'll get to like bracing your core and really learning how to do that. That's to me. Uh, so long as my client is breathing normally, I, I'm I'm okay with that. As we get more advanced and really start loading and exerting ourselves, like yeah, we can, this is a, a technique that I, we can get better at learning how to brace and breathe. And I think there's some value to that for sure. But teaching it to a new client sometimes ends up causing them to be thinking about their breathing more than the movement. And learning the movement takes so long to get good at that that I don't want to distract them with something else like, oh, you need to be breathing in for three seconds and then releasing and then, oh, don't forget to breathe. And it's like, oh, shit. Your body will figure out a way to get it done. I mean, if you're you're breathing and and you're doing the movement, like I'm I'm telling most of my clients at the beginning, like let's let's get the movement down really, really well and then we'll add that. You want to get crazy with breathing, you got to look at Olympic, like top level Olympic lifters. Yeah. I mean, they do, they have to brace their, core in a particular way they also have to brace their sphincter in a particular way i'm not making this up <laughs> oh yeah this is actually you true blowouts, dude. that is a hundred percent true do not google that because yeah. it will it and you're will, and, we, and as a great example and that that's the spectrum beginner olympic athlete you yeah. know what i'm saying and like you know there's and at some point there makes it makes a lot of sense to mm-hmm. start moving in the direction of coaching towards that but i you know we trained mostly normal people that are learning how to train and move move the weight properly, and I I never liked uh, overcom. And some I had I had other trainers that loved to do this. They loved to like get real technical about the breathing portion, and I wasn't a fan of it because I yeah. felt like it distracted them from the movement portion, and that is so hard to get a client mm-hmm. to do. Well, I like your recommendation with the drawn in maneuver, and you can do that all kinds of different ways. Mm-hmm. It's just really just having them focus on how do I brace but still be able to breathe and, and be able to work my way through that. It's a valuable thing to do just to be able to maintain stability and anchor yourself doing all these movements. Right. All right, our next caller is Garrett from Texas. Garrett, what's happening? Hey, how you doing, guys? Good. Uh, I just want to say thank you for having me on the show. Uh, I really, you guys have been a big part of my fitness journey and I really appreciate everything you're doing with your podcast and all the resources you have out there. So thanks for having me on. Awesome. Got it. Right on. So, um, my question is about basically evaluating your programming. And I asked this in light of, I love what you guys talk about all the time about fitness being a long time journey, like a lifelong deal. Um, and trying to avoid the, like, look how shredded I got in 90 days. Um, so what are the best metrics for evaluating your programming, especially when that programming is homemade or DIY, um, as well as like evaluating your effort level, intentionality, and all those things around the programming that you've created? What, what's your background when it comes to exercise programming? So uh, always homemade. I mean, I started in endurance sports in my 20s. Uh, I got up to like 230 pounds of kind of Oreo squishy, um, got into triathlon on a dare, loved it. Um, but I think even you guys were talking about in a previous podcast about how, when you do the caloric deficit, plus a lot of cardio, 
uh, when you stop, you kind of blow back up. And that's exactly what happened. As soon as I was done racing, uh, I put all the weight back on, uh, tried to figure it out. And then once I, once I got into lifting and resistance training, it was really about watching your content, watching a couple other trainers and, and just trying to piece together the different parts that I've uh, seen and learned from you guys and trying to create my own programming. Okay. And so this whole time, have you been training consistently or was it on and off? Yeah. So, um, it depends on when you start. Uh, I started resistance training a year ago in March and then six months in got COVID, uh, ended up on my bed for a week and then in the hospital for a week. And when I got home from being in the hospital, uh, I think it was about a month before I could start training again. And I felt like I had lost everything. I mean, I went from what it felt like really good squat and deadlift to back to where I started back in a year ago. Um, but since then I am in three days a week. I don't miss unless I'm out of town and I don't go out of town very much. I'm, I, I love to be in the gym. So no, I try to stay as consistent as I can. Now are you structuring these workouts to be total body workouts? Or are you doing kind of like a split routine you set up for yourself? Um, so I'm trying to follow along with what you guys talk about, about full body. So I'm in the gym three days a week um, and I split it so that I do uh, basically a set A and a set B. So two days a week I'm doing set, like this week I'm doing two days of set A, one day of set B, and then next week it'll flip. And then um, I'm either doing deadlift or squat on each one of those. So set A is squat, set B is deadlift. And then I have chest, biceps, lats with back and calves and core on one day. And then the other day is chest, shoulders, back, calves, and core. So that's that's the breakout well, for the two, two different programs. Two things here, Garrett. One, there's a lot of really, really good triathlon-type programming out there, strength training-type programming out there written by experts. And with your background, you know a little bit about kind of how your body feels, but I don't. I wouldn't say that you would be like a this isn't your job is what I'm trying to say. So there's a lot of value in investing in uh, well-written programming and it's very inexpensive. It's one of the, the least expensive investments you can make. The second thing is you, your question was, how do I know if I'm progressing? I mean, you have objective metrics. Am I stronger? Do I have better performance? Do I feel better? How do my joints feel? Um, you know, you got to consider all of that and, and don't always look at performance as the way to see if you're Improving because at some point performance can't continue to improve, right? You, you, you're only going to get so fast, you're only going to get so strong. So at that point, is going to be based off of how you feel and is it improving your the quality of the of your life right now, right? Is is my, is the quality of life improving for me in terms of energy and and how I feel? And that's going to kind of direct you in the right way. But I would go with a well programmed workout, and I'm going to send you one. I'm going to send you maps performance just based off your goals. I think that would probably be the best thing to follow at the moment. Just out of curiosity, how how long have you been listening to the program here? Um, man, when I started lifting, I, I didn't know anything. I went to the gym you mean um, podcast? and I podcast. put a squat rack podcast. on. I was like, how long, you listen, how long have you been listening to the podcast? Oh, for, since I started because I knew I, I didn't know anything. I was okay. like, I, I don't know how to do this. So I found you guys uh, and I've been, I've been in for at least a year. Yeah. Oh, okay. And just out of curiosity, how come you haven't started a MAPS program? Uh <laughs> Honestly, I, I'm a teacher with kids. Okay. So uh, I've had to kind of do everything DIY just okay. because. Cool. Okay. I get it. I mean, that's, that's fine. That's, I just, I was really curious because I could tell. I mean, obviously, you have respect for what we talk about and trust in what, our advice. You've yeah. And I, I've looked at your programs and, and it's always one of those like, man, when I, when I can, that's what I want to do. Okay. Um, yeah. No, we'll send one right over to you, Garrett. Um, thank so you. I'll send you mass performance. I think that one's going to help you. And then what it'll do because it's because of its structure. You'll follow it and you'll learn more about how your body feels and then you'll mm -hmm. be able to modify from there, you know? That's awesome. Versus and, starting and from scratch on your own. Yeah, because it's yeah, kind of hard to it, dive in and like give you all the specifics of what, you know, why we did things a certain way. Like it's better for you oh, to go awesome. through it and then, then you know, come it. back and have questions and, and figure out how to modify it so it specifically tailors more towards your goals. Yeah, why don't we why don't we do this too? Doug, why don't you hook them up with the forum too? So I'm going to hook you up with a form, Garrett. That way you can actually oh, wow. uh, get in with the community. We're in there. And so as you, you go as you go through this process, uh, not only can you you're, you share your journey and ask questions in there, we can get to you or other people that are going through the same thing can do the same thing. That's awesome. Cool. I And that's the hardest part is like trying to connect to people and 
like, how do you do this? So yeah. I really appreciate it. You're going to love the community in there, man. All right, Garrett. Thank thanks you. for calling in. Hey, thanks guys. Y'all have an awesome day. Yeah, no cool. problem. Right on. Yeah, it, it's it's interesting because I'm not saying this is Garrett, right? Um, and he's got kids and he said he's a teacher and obviously that's you know, somewhat challenging. P, it's very interesting the value people place on workout programming versus what they would place on, let's say- Supplements. Yeah, two or three jugs of protein. Right, right. Mm-hmm. For the price of probably two jugs of protein powder, which would last you 60 days, you could get a well-programmed workout. Now, the problem is, is there's a lot of free workouts out there Right. That are garbage. There's a lot of exercises you could do. There's a lot of different ways you could sweat and get sore. Which is what created sort of that devaluation, I yeah. think, of of you know how people perceive fitness yeah. programs. Yeah, it would be like people giving away dirt with like two amino acids in it. And be like, it's free. It's protein. You're like, oh, this, I don't need to buy protein because I got all this free protein. So, well, it's not really the same thing. Yeah. One of the best investments you can make is in a well-programmed workout. And athletes know this. There's a reason why they hire coaches and they hire trainers and they work with strength coaches. It makes a huge difference, but we place way more value on things that are not worth even close to the same value. I mean, if I looked at workout and diet, there isn't a single supplement or combination of supplements that would even come close to the value of uh, of what that can do. So, And I want people to consider that because I know how easy it is. It would be so easy for me on the podcast right now to sell a fat burner for a hundred bucks. I could sell a fat burner. I could sell more fat burners for hundred bucks than I can sell a three month well-programmed workout for hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just, that, that, that's just part Promise of the, in a pill. the yeah. fitness industry has really done a crappy job of, uh, of, you know, placing more value on these profitable things. And well, I, th- I just think things. that I think I Justin hit it on the head. I think that, you know, there's a lot of free programs out there. There's not a lot of free fat burners out there. There's not a lot of free protein powder out there. So it's it's a hard it's a hard compare. I get where you're comparing it. Yeah. You're hundred percent right. But Justin's point is the reason why. It's because the, you, if you don't know, you don't know the difference between good programming, great programming, and dog shit. Well, programming. How many people yeah. have yeah. told you this exercise? With, with, yeah. It's what we talk about all the time. A majority of people, even people who've been working out for a real long time, that measure an effective workout uh incorrectly. Yeah. I'm how sore hard, and I how sweat. sore am I? Yeah. How sweaty did I get? Like, no. It's like so if that's how most people measure a a good workout and there's tons of free workouts that make you sweat and sore on the internet, it's, it's hard to, to make that transition. I mean, part of the podcast is that is educating people on that. It's not that simple, you know? And I love when you always bring the analogy of like writing code for something. It's like, yeah, you can put a bunch of random numbers and shit together. It doesn't mean you could, you got a fucking program. Yeah. 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 Pixelated (laughs) head. That's all weird. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's one of the best investments you can make. The most, the best investment you could ever make is hiring an actual coach. There's nothing better than that. A good one. The next step is to hire is to get yourself a well-programmed workout. And once you do it, you know, what's funny too, and it's just a little business, uh, you know, just a little openness on the business. When people get one of our programs, the odds that they'll get another one, what's the, what is that, Adam? It's like lifetime value is three times, three X that. So most people buy three to four programs. Yeah. Why? Right? They follow one, like, oh my gosh. Yeah. What? This is crazy. I can't believe how, how oh, much this is actually this is. effective. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So that's, that's the big difference right there. Look, uh, if you like the show, you'll love mindpumpfree.com. We got a lot of free content there, free guides. Go to mindpumpfree.com and download some free guides to help you with your fitness and health goals. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal.